And here we are once again. Thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rapid, and this is going to be a scrim between the members of Four Not Gaming and Team Legion, formerly known as Team Reflex. And I just got done running back to my computer to cast this, so I'm going to take a quick drink of water. Be right back with you. All right, we're good. So uh, here's what's up. Uh, both teams are running a lot of extra members on their rosters just because uh, they're kind of trying out some new people, not necessarily for... Oh my goodness, you're going to become part of our team instantaneously, but they are going to be running a lot of subs. And so uh, to go over a little bit of the lineups, because it doesn't look like they're going to meet one another anytime soon. By anytime I soon, I mean immediately. It's going to be Pearl and Bloodwater who are already on Fournaut's team. They're going to have a V8 uh, Takashi X with them as well. He's going to be running mid Morgana. Excellent, excellent AP mid. And actually, they're going to get positioning. They're going to run around into the bush instantaneously. Takashi X goes down. There's a lot of AoE damage, a lot of AoE heals. But with Takashi gone, that's going to be one for one. Right now, Nocturne will fall. And next, there's an exhaust onto Demon Lull. who's not doing him a whole lot of damage. But Bloodwater is going to go down really low. This could be absolutely horrible for or not, they're gonna pick up the kill here with the Phosphorus Bomb onto Nunu. And will Parole actually get out of here alive? He gets slowed here, could probably pick up the kill. He's running AP Lulu, so that's not exactly a horrible choice. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four kills. Almost an ace at level one. That's why you uh that's why you don't face check bushes, guys. Uh I don't know what to tell you, but uh, that was pretty uh pretty rough. Speaking of pretty rough, let's check out where those kills did go down. Both kills went bottom lane for for not, whereas uh, Team Legion picked up two on their AP mid. Lulu is going to be rocking a lot of extra gold. If you check out what she has right now, she has 850 gold at level one. Uh, Should have probably gone back and picked up uh, Doran's boards and pots or something crazy like that. But uh, just going to opt for a lot of extra lady dominance. And here's the thing about AP Lulu, like. It's it's stupid because it's like it's like you're a zillion, but you have more peel and you have a heal that goes through ignite. I don't exactly understand how exactly that's fair. A lot of more just running in here on Kikami, please. Does he have his uh, stealth? No, he does not. He's just gonna dash on out of there. A lot of more actually takes a turret shot, and so Kiko is gonna get out of there alive. A lot of more is gonna actually get jumped on immediately because he knows that Itai is here. We have the flash, and will this be enough to pick up Kiko? No, it's not. A lot of Morris actually gets away as well, so a whole lot of nothing going on other than uh, Kikumi, please, dropping down to below 200 health. So he's gonna pop his potion and try to sustain here, but Cruiser the Bruiser is actually uh, full health and half mana, so he's gonna be able to do just fine against. Uh, Wukong, meanwhile, Parole's dropping down extremely low. He has his spell shield on, so no spells. Will be able to pick up the kill. And uh, not in range for an auto attack. Corky's gonna have to back on out of there. Bloodwater actually doing a lot of damage. Uh, that blood boil increasing his attack speed, so that even though he's only having 58 attack damage, it's 40% uh, faster, if I'm not mistaken. 25%. There's another stun onto Peril. He's gonna pop his spell shield instantaneously if he can. Actually, no, does a really good job of getting out of there alive because he did have Bloodwater block for him, and uh, Corky's not six yet, so he didn't have to worry about rockets. So, to go over the lineups, just to let you know who is extra, they do have Takashi X from V8. Uh, Kikomi, please, is actually a top lane. Uh, he's just a really strong so top lane uh, solo queue. I believe he's actually 2200, 2220, something like that. Uh, Itai, you guys have seen before um, on their sub team. He's, uh, I believe he also plays for the CSL, if I'm not uh, not mistaken. So for the subs for Team Legion, they're actually going to have Freaker in place of, uh, is it Inubish? No, he plays for MTW. And then they're going to have Cruiser the Bruiser running at top lane. So they won't have Arknight available either, so... Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of an interesting change. Not something I think uh, I'm used to, but if you guys have watched Cruise of the Bruisers stream at all, and you definitely should, I'll go ahead and throw a link to it down there in the description. If I don't, make sure to remind me in the comments. But uh, check out his stream, he streams a lot, he's pretty popular, and uh, yeah, he's really good. So 
Takashi's gonna try to make the best of a bad situation in that he's going up against AP Lulu, who got double first blood. That means she's gonna go back, come back to lane with double wards, three pots, sword shoes, and Dorian's. That's a lot of gold. Takashi's gonna try to make up the difference by killing off these raids, gets the last auto off for the full clear. And here's the deal. Here's the thing about uh, hitting Prolly here. Um, the thing that makes him like Zillion is that you can put picks on someone and then you just hit uh, the Glitter Lance no matter what. How long does picks last? It's almost up and does actually get the hit. I think that was before the Black Shield ran off, so not very significant. Ugh. Dark Binding does not pick up the kill and now Takashi X is left with half health and half or a quarter mana. And bottom lane, Vricker's waiting to get another stun. He's hiding in the bush, so oh my goodness, so much burst damage. Off on to Peril. Oh, just gets ridiculous to burst down. The uh, Ignite is off. Summoner heal being forced there, so Peril will live. And uh, meanwhile, we're going to have a gank here by Aitai. Not the most effective here, and uh, there's going to be a ward. I was about to say here, and then I realized that that's one of the things that I hate that casters say. And here goes the ult here from Takashi. Will he go down? No, he does go down. Does not land the dark binding. He had landed that Aitai may have been able to go in there. And pick up the kill, but uh, so much burst there from uh, Frawley, and it probably is actually going to buff a lot of Mortis. Not sure if that's totally the plan, but it's not going to be enough to save him. Excellent, uh, what do you call that? Duskbringer picking up the kill, and then with the exhaust, he's going to be able to get out of there alive. He, I believe he has, does have Spell Shield just now coming off the cooldown, and with the extra speed, he's going to be able to make it back to turret. Uh, is a lot of Mortis going hard in the paint for this? Yes, he is. He's going to get one more bear stance, a premature Spell Shield. Actually, could have cost Aitai's life, but a lot of more is diving double turrets, or triple turrets, if you want to count this one, which technically did go behind. That was pretty insane. Freaker's going to come up, drop a ward at the uh, red buff, so really aggressive warding, and they actually did see him drop through there. And with this trajectory, you can kind of guess that maybe he warded something, but I think they're going to guess that he warded up here, so... Kiko's not doing that bad a job top lane, and uh, if you guys watch OGN, LOL, or... Azubu LOL champions on OGN, and you know that's uh, Malphite's hard countered by AD Cannon top, but uh, Kikomi please it can actually do a lot of work because he does have the 25 armor shred uh, from his uh, crushing blow, I believe it is. 30% uh, is actually what it is, so uh, it could be 20, no, it's not 20 it's not 25 uh, by any means. So he's going to reduce not only the armor from Malphite, but also the attack damage. from Brutal Strikes. So, uh, looks like a lot of more is actually pretty low. We'll actually pick up his red buff. Probably will go do double golems as well. He's having a micro a little bit just because he is pretty low. Rolls around in double golems and then will go back. Kiko's actually going to jump, get jumped here by Cruz the Bruiser Force to uh, use a little bit of his mana and get away there. He, uh, just like the attack speed slow is really what gets you from Cruz the Bruiser. Like, you don't uh, really see... You know, it does, it's not really you know, a giant, big, red, flashing glyph that says, you can't attack me, but it's a 45% slow, and you don't even have to level it, so... User entered your channel. Apparently, a user is entering my channel, and that means I'm going to have to alt-tab, kill off team speak, and I'm going to move back into the game. Apologies for that brief interruption, but here we are once again mid lane. There's nobody here. And that's because Takashi X has been having to roam a lot for uh, as much jungle as he possibly can. Went around the safe way just to get to his blue buff. He's going to be uh, picking that one up. And so that's going to be pretty good. Blue buff should respawn for Lulu at uh, any moment. Probably has actually realized what Morgana's been doing and is doing the same thing in himself. Uh, and there's just really not a whole lot you can do against uh, AP Lulu. Like, if you know how to play her, she is absolutely ridiculous. I don't think a whole lot of people do. I'd say, like, two to three people, you know, like Skara. Uh, probably, maybe, uh, I'd say that, you know, definitely somebody like Kramer121 has picked up a little bit of AP Lulu himself. So, a lot of the top AP mids. I don't think GG's tried him out very much recently, but uh, it's still extremely effective. Break a lot of mortis and probably will all be able to uh, take down this dragon. Although with the attack speed slow onto a lot of mortis, it's actually pretty significant. If you check that out, it's uh, yeah, it just says reduce attack speed, so you don't know exactly how much. Kiko's gonna get out of there. Malphite doing a really good job chasing. He has his ult available, so he could actually chase in for the kill. He's actually gonna go for it. Drops the ignite, gets the autos off. But will Kiko go down? He has the last tick of ignite and the wheel of doom. 
rolls on home the uh, seismic shard picking up the kill there for Cruz the Bruiser able to get out of there but we do have Kakashi X engaged could it be enough bottom lane there's a lot of action but we're watching this one up here Parole is gonna get out alive Cruiser is gonna get hit by the ult a dark binding picking up the kill and so that's going to be a uh, kill from T or almost a uh, death from Takashi Cruiser's a little bit surprised that all went down and actually, oh my goodness, Demon Lull's dodging the turrets, Parole getting picked up because he flashed after the auto attack was already in the air, uh, Bloodwater did the best that he could, but he's probably gonna get dropped here, and actually, no, there's gonna be a Nocturne ulting in, I tie perfect positioning, Freaker's gonna try to flash over the wall, does he have it up, no, he's not gonna be able to get out of there anytime soon, Prawley's coming down and they recognize that because he did pass over that excellent ward there, Nocturne it will toss, uh, pass out of there, did pass out. That's not actually what I meant. Bloodwater taking the long way home and uh, just opts to run back there. And actually, if you're before your base turret, it's actually faster to hit the B button. But if you're past here, actually, if, I think if you're right here, although with the blood boil, I think you can start from right here. My friend Frank made an excellent video on exactly where you should or shouldn't go back from, and so I'll make sure to uh, point that out. Top lane, keeping me pleased. Actually, doing a lot of damage to Loud Amortis, who is holding the lane there while Cruz the Bruiser did uh, walk all the way back up there. Let's check out items that he did pick up. He went triple Doran's ring. So he's still going tanky, but he's going for a lot of AP. And that's not something you see really standard from a lot of Malphites. Usually they choose to go the armor route, but uh, they're running up against uh, A, a lot of armor shred, and B, uh, not a whole lot of, uh, of AD. Like, sure, you have. Uh, Sivir bottom lane, but if we check out exactly how Peril has been doing uh, this game He's sitting at 76 last hits to 78 So he's even as far as that's concerned and so I think with Wukong top that wouldn't be the worst idea But it uh, looks like he's doing a lot of a uh, lot of damage here with just going AP and so I'm not going to fault him for doing that Just an interesting build choice um, Chikashi actually went around there took the raise and is now back in a mid lane probably knows what's up and so I'm just gonna last hit the last minion with picks. Uh, Takashi's gonna drag the minions into a perfect circle, kill them all off with the pool, and push clear that wave. So even though Takashi was down an early kill, picked up one top, is that 100 CS versus 100 from Prolly? So that's pretty significant. And uh, with the next wave pushing Takashi, guys, he has full health, full mana, and with Nocturne waiting in the wings, will they be able to make something happen to Prolly here? Something that maybe Pix will have to uh, maybe uh, take a listen to? That's, that's actually a pretty evil looking Pix. If at any point they made a Navi skin for Pix, A, Riot Navi would pick that up, and B, I would buy it in like two seconds. So uh, that's where my 20 bucks is going whenever they release that legendary skin. Ward put in the bush uh, versus Freaker and Demon Lull, but it uh, doesn't actually make a difference because they do have the attack speed to last hit that. I believe you actually need, is it 1.6 to be able to uh, take down a ward if you have a move resetting a technique. Pico's gonna go down here. No, he's gonna get dropped. He will actually go down. A lot of Mortis is actually gonna get dropped by Itai, or could he get away here? Bear Stance is super fast, but I think one more Duskbringer. Actually, he's going to get ulted by Morgana. Will it break the flash? He's going to get the stun. Dark Binding is on. Is the Ignite going to get it? Yes, it does. Itai is in the danger zone, but all he has to go against is uh, Prawley, which is probably enough. Takashi not taking the safe road, just opts to take the most direct road to the Nexus, and uh, ooh, pick saving lives. As the support character, <laughs> way, 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 that she is. <laughs> Takashi will go down here to Prolly after not realizing exactly how much damage AP Lulu does do. The magic pen boots, especially, amplify Pix's uh, three bolts, 75 total magic damage, which does have that penetration on points. So, uh, Prolly is doing so much damage. Actually, also has red buff. On top of that and that's just the thing it's a little bit like Lena from Dota her auto attacks are just so ridiculous and uh, plus she has picks so she can put a dot on you or not a dot but uh, vision on you that'll eventually hit her glitter lance and so it's basically re harass wave clears whatever you want and uh, it just does so much work plus because you can hit every single minion in the wave if you put picks on one of the uh, cannon minions or on one of the the caster minions then you hit Every single person in the wave, or every single minion, for uh, 280 plus 112, 
and then you uh, you life steal off of a percentage of that. So it's pretty ridiculous. Tons of lane sustain, and that's just what makes Lulu uh, extremely effective mid. Actually, I've seen a lot of the talking, especially like uh, Scara mentioned that, like why for a support character you have such ridiculously high AP ratios. I don't quite understand, and apparently he didn't either, but uh, he just definitely loves to play his AP Lulu, and I think I also saw Phantom Lord playing a lot of that just because it is kind of ridiculous, and as people play out, figure out how to play it better, it just gets that much better, I said better squat, it's that much um, more effective, there we go. Eventually I figure out what I'm supposed to say. Uh, Takashi is going to be able to uh, pool this any second now. He's just going to group it up into a circle, not take that much damage. Life steal, back off of it, or rather spell bam. Comes down for the last auto, and this is going to be a confrontation around Baron. You see Kiko and Itai both slowed there by Prawley, and it uh, looks like Legion has a really good position here. Onto the Baron buff, it is picked, there is no ward coverage, but it uh, looks like they want to make a play. Takashi is slow, so he's not going to be able to get in position uh, that he really wants to. Oh my goodness, Fruit of the Bruiser having a delayed ult. Oh, there's the instantaneous ult onto Demon Ult. Uh, Kiko's dangerously low, he pops his ult. And actually, probably flashing, so he does not get knocked out. Hits the Dark Binding from Takashi, and uh, could this be even? It's 1-2, one 1-3. To one to uh, Fortnite needs to get out of dodge. The Wheel of Doom uh, keeps turning. <laughs> the turn and laugh there uh, from Nunu. Bloodwater goes down and uh, just one bad team fight after another as uh, I don't know it's just uh, not really what V8 Takashi X needed to accomplish there. Of course the last day with Dark Bindings and that's when you know things are not going your way. Legion turns around and with Cruiser's help picks up the Baron or Dragon. Why do I always confuse them? They're on opposite ends of the map. Tut tut indeed. Mid turret is uh, in danger, but there's not a whole lot Takashi can do besides just do a wave clear. An excellent uh, pool will accomplish that. And uh, now he's gonna go over here, pick up a blue buff, and um, with probably already having his, it's about halfway down. Uh, I think he actually got that one from Morgana. She might have inherited it herself as well. Dark Binding picks that up. It does not actually instantaneously regen your mana as crazily as it used to do before. And if we check out the MP5, we're actually going to see that it's at 80 instead of you know the 120 that it would have been at previously. Will picks be able to fire off another bolt before the cooldown runs out. I believe if you actually have 40% CDR, you can in fact hit twice with that. But with only 24, uh, Morgana will stay alive. Spell shield actually uh, prevents Itai from taking any damage, and he's just gonna roll over here. Unless Morgana's like, you know what? I'm juggling now. So we'll pick up the uh, Wraith camp here uh, instead of letting Itai have it. I think that's a good point, just because Morgana needs to get big. She's going for an Abyss Scepter just because you can't handle the uh, insane harass here from Prolly. It's just ugh, ridiculous. Checked over there by Wraith. Actually, didn't need to. Bottom lane, looks like uh, Pearl will go down Bloodwater, the next to fall, actually no, makes it out, does not get hit by the uh, missile barrage there for Corky, makes it out alive, probably wants to take care of this, and so does Lattimortis, he's gonna tank, Itai is there, but Bloodwater is not, and he will make it out alive. Demon Will can pretty much finish off this turret wherever he, whenever he wants, he's gonna run it actually and probably take the next wave all right now he's just gonna take it down and then move on to the next team fight a lot of more is picking up a red buff for team legion demon lull finishes it off kiko is gonna run back to the safety of his turret while cruiser jumps on him in that department uh, he's gonna run down here most likely either ward blue yeah there we go trinity forest is the first item here from corky with double dorans and berserker greaves whereas uh, you see the much more traditional build here from parole going for uh infinity itch could actually complete that into a Bloodthirster. Bloodthirster first, not really the most effective, especially when they do have a Malphite on their team. So he already has 274 armor with ridiculously low cooldowns. It is sitting at 25, 25. And here goes the damage onto Kiko. He knows that he does have the move speed with the Wheel of Death. And it does not actually pick up the kill here onto Kiko. A little bit premature ult there. He's just like, hey man, what's up? That's uh. That's the way it's going to be, and I'm um, kind of boss of this lane, and he kind of is, because he's so, so far. If we look at uh, the amount of CS that we're working with, we see 141 to uh, Kiko's 0-4 with only 94 CS. So he's down uh, 3 kills, 
He's up three deaths, down four assists, and uh, down about 40 farms, so 45 farms, something like that. Cruz has just been doing so much work top lane, and that's exactly what you want to have happen to your top lane, because once you snowball rep, <clears throat> once you snowball top lane, uh, it kind of tends to feed on into the other ones because you don't actually have to stay up there. And once you start putting pressure elsewhere, that's usually the straw that breaks the camel's back to use an overused adage. Uh, Flash out from Demon Law, Professor Grinning, slow stunned. Uh, the attack speed is down. Bloodwater Shenmue is all does not actually do any damage at all. Did not actually let it uh, ramp up there. I believe it has an exponential of ramping up. If I'm correct. Kiko forced to go back, went triple Doran's Merc Treads, and then it's gonna go for a Phage, but doesn't have the uh, gold to complete it. That's probably the most worthless pickup ever. Breaker's gonna go down here, so it's gonna be three here on to. Actually, it was a four man gank finishing that off. Demon Lull does make it out alive after the Valkyrie, but probably he's gonna zoom over here, take down the big wolf, and then uh, roll on to Lattimore's and Cruiser. Bloodwater actually taking either a turret shot or something there to make him drop down into the king range. Three man top, second turret, and that will fall down. There we go, 10,000 gold advantage exactly here for Team Legion. They're just dominating absolutely every single objective, taking all the dragons, stealing all the jungle, farming up as much as humanly possible. If you look at their numbers and then you look at. Uh, Ouch, you look at Team Legion, or uh, Fornoth's numbers, and uh, Legion definitely knows what's up. Frozen Mallet picked up by Lottomortis. He's going to go for an uh, Aegis next? Yeah, I think that's probably what we're going to see. He does have all three components for that. Uh, Cruiser's just waiting a little bit to be able to pop his Brilliance Pot, picks that up, and then will run back to top lane. He actually has, you know, not to mention, uh, oh, wow, this Desperation Baron is going to be stopped by uh, Prolly and Freaker. So it's gonna prevent any sort of shenaniganry on uh, on Four Knots part. Now that parole is uh, actually kind of catching up, he almost has infed. But when you're saying words like almost at uh, 22 minutes into the game, when you're definitely supposed to have your first item, that's just going to illustrate the uh, horrible position that Four Knot finds themselves in right now. So back to the matter at hand, I unfortunately do not have dual screens, so when something goes wrong, I have to all tap for it. Here we go, we are gonna see Prolly continuing to farm out mid lane, and what's gonna happen next is, well, there's not gonna be a whole lot of contestation around the dragon pit, because there's nothing that Fornot can do. Right now, they're just trying to solve their wounds, trying to get a really good team fight, because when you have more honor on your team, you know, you're never really wholly counted out, because you run into team fight, you get a five man snare, and then if there's any sort of focus fire, somebody's gonna die. And if you can pick up the next kill after that, then that's uh, exactly what you're gonna look for. Probably, like I said, just full clears waves like that. Takes out the cannon minions, could have gotten the melee ones, or takes out the uh, melee, could have gotten the ranged, but uh, Pico just cannot walk in the lane anymore. Cruz are just too strong. Probably gonna turn that into like a death cap, or uh, I guess maybe not an abyssal quite yet, because uh, it looks like either. Uh, yeah, that's probably gonna be the pickup there for probably could get a QSS and or Banshee's Veil But I'm not sure the defense is the first thing on his mind Lattimore is just ridiculously tanky right now. He's got that uh, frozen now putting him up over 3k Health plus the shield from probably is just renewable health so so many shields you got the heals as well and uh, Cruiser's got a shield Lattimore just has double shield or has a shield Probably does as well. Demon Lull is going to be able to sit in the back, dodging the dark fighting there from Takashi X. And so, I don't know, guys. This is uh, it's not looking good for our heroes if our heroes are Team Four Not. Probably going to run over here and let's see how exactly off the clear this wave. He's just going to launch a double glitter lands. Throw down picks and will he be able to pick that up? No, he's just gonna speed himself away with Winzy. 
And uh, now Freak Cruise, the Bruiser, and Loud Amortis are all grouping up around here. Do we have a CV? No. They're just over there waiting. They're trying to bait for not into running into the bush. But uh, do they actually have vision over here? We check the vision here. They do not actually know what's going on. Are they going to walk into the bush of death? No, they are not. They're going to skip that. And a little bit of a glitchy lag situation there. But nevertheless, uh, actually going to close in here onto uh, Kakashi X. The flash is actually perfectly spell shielded by a double spell shield. Uh, people not. Raleigh's going to almost drop down. Flashes out, uses his own on himself. Demon Lola gets snared there. He actually will go down. Bloodwater pops in the slow field, but he's actually in the danger zone as well. He will fall, but takes Cruise of the Bruiser with him. And now is a remarkably even team fight. They do go one for three. It's now uh, Freaker's going to get taken down. So that's exactly what I was talking about. And if you look at the people who did survive from Team Legion, that was horrible. They all got caught in the Morgana ult. I uh, forced the ult from Lulu to be used on Prolly, who was just taken out of the fight anyways. And now, uh, things are kind of turning around. That was definitely the fight that Fornot needed to come back into the game. Parole is actually totally out of mana. Has to stop taking it. And uh, will they be able to finish it off in time? Prolly's going to jump in there. Can he contest? It almost takes down... Uh, either Parole or Kiko, but both of those will, both of them will get out alive. We'll probably go down here now. Just takes the ticks from the, uh, pool of stankiness. That's gonna be enough, but, uh, Parole actually needs to get out of here. Uh, he's gonna get jumped onto by a lot of Morris. If he chooses to dive, he's not quite as crazy as it was at the beginning of the game. But, uh, Fortnite needs to go back, needs to power up, and, uh, get the job done. There's the Shirelias from Bloodwater. He's also gonna have, uh... Blood Boil available if they need to get out of there even faster. So, I will get Takashi out of there alive. He's going to go back and probably will pick up, uh, let's see, not quite in range of uh, Rabadons yet. Lulu actually did opt for the uh, Quicksilver Sash, so he's going to use that against the uh, inevitable stun. All right, you could use it from Fear from Nocturne, who just insta jibs either her or Corky. Or could alternatively uh, just use the break the Morgana Dark Binding and then still be extremely effective. Both teams just kind of grouping up around the mid turret, and things have totally turned around uh, since that uh, last big fight that did result in a Baron for four not. And now it is they who are applying. It. All right, are they? Now it is they who are applying the pressure to uh, the middle turret. I don't think they actually have enough poke. They don't want to do anything super crazy. I'm uh, more so they're taking a fair amount of damage there. And by a fair amount, I mean about uh, what is that? 45, 25 percent of his health. Nothing too too insane. He's gonna back off. Turtle Stance heal up off of the uh, Wolf Camp. He's actually just going to feed it down. There goes the Turtle Stance. He's going to get off a few autos. And uh, with a higher maximum health. Oh, actually, a really good check there by Kiko. This will be a blue buff steal. That Baron only results in a steal on the blue buff. I'm not sure that's exactly worth it. But uh, they did A, keep Legion from having it. B, kill off a bunch of them. And C, are going to be able to catch a lot of Mortis here. They're going to turn around straight into Freaker. He's going to get instant jib. Attempted to save is not good enough. There's the ult finally by Takashi, but will it be enough? I don't think so. A lot of Morris actually falls down there. Probably is in hot pursuit. By a hot pursuit, I mean he has a Lumsy on. And ouch, that's going to be four down. Four for two, the trade, with only Takashi getting out alive just thanks to that snare. It's going to get slowed, actually, by the Glitter Lance. Could this be enough to pick up the kill? Yes, it is. There's the ace. It's 13 to 21. I don't think we'll actually see a surrender here just because the death our death is not imminent so uh, I think it's going to be quite a while before we see that and quite a while I'll probably be the next team fight so uh, Cruiser is actually stacking things up won't see this much uh, creep clears as possible they're actually gonna look to take down the first uh, base turret here if they decided to push in there they did not however just uh, seeing the juicy juicy blue buff and cooking his cooldowns so it's gonna go ahead and bust that up and actually uh, I believe uh, the cooldown for Missile Barrage is actually affected uh, by the added cooldowns. We're going to have to check that out and see. I uh, know the actual ability stores up every 10 seconds. So TIL, as far as that's concerned. Uh, Freaker could take out the ward in the bush, but he just ran on by there and uh, I'm spread a dragon instead. So when you're ahead, uh, 12,000 gold. Dragon's probably not as significant. 13,000. That's about 12,000. Uh, not as significant as it would 
otherwise be, but uh, just lengthening your stride. Now it's at 16,000. Oh my goodness. That's a uh, 14,000. Or Oh my goodness, just stop trolling me, 13k. QSS actually picked up on Corky as well, so apparently if you have a Morgana on the enemy team, you kind of want to hit that QSS button. Morris is straight up man mode right now. He's got so much armor. He knows there's nothing that Sivir can do to him. He has 88 MR, so Morgana's still kind of a threat, but she doesn't really deal enough damage to work through 3,300 health. So it's all about what's going to get to Loud Morris, and I think that the answer right now is not Morgana. It's not uh, Sivir. It's not even Wukong. He got really shut down and had to go basically just all health, only having 178 damage, so or, or attack damage. As far as that's concerned, so I don't know, man. It's uh, it's gonna be pretty interesting uh, to see exactly how Fornot wants to play this next fight. They're gonna clear out the wave, so it looks like their answer is gonna be turrets for DPSing Lada Mortis. It's still not effective because he has so many shields. They can't they can't even break the shield on him. So Evil Lull's gonna be throwing big ones over the side, uh, just attempting to get a lot more poke. And it still looks like uh, Legion wants to be able to press that, but with no minions, they will back out. And uh, just head over to another objective, and it looks like that objective could very well be a uh, Baron buff. It will be up uh, anytime soon, uh, and, uh, and I think that Fornot does realize that they're gonna roll around there. Will they actually be able to take this down? Bottom turret actually taken down by a minion push for Fornot. So, you know, when that's all you got, you gotta take what you can. But as far as Steam Legion is concerned, you gotta look at the HPs. Uh, you see 2800 on Cruiser, uh, even more, 3300 on Lada He's actually gonna get jumped on, but with a Lulu ult, not the person you wanna focus. Horrible focus there. Lada Morris does live. He has an Ignite on him, and so he does fall, actually. Breaker going down as well, just caught way out of position. Demon Lull's dangerously low, but you cannot underestimate the damage that Lulu puts out. That was a two for two trade. Demon Lull's dangerously low. Will they be able to chase him down? Sivir's gonna flash. Will she get the, she gets the extra auto? One more boomerang could pick that up. The ice ball is down, and that's gonna be the kill on Frawley. Cruiser's gonna go down next, and the ace picked up onto, oh my goodness. Was that a ricochet? I think it actually was a ricochet that uh, killed off uh, Corky down there. I'm not sure what hit Demon Lull, but he did go down, and that's actually an ace. And I said what they had to do is work through the beef, and what they did is they caught Lattimore just out of position, threw everything they could at him, took him down, and once he was out of the picture and or CC'd, they just ignored him and then went through uh, the rest of the damage. Picked off Cruiser. Actually, they went through the rest of the beef, and once you had no beef to sit in front of people like uh, Prowley, who really has no defensive, like he has a little bit of MR, so it's up at 116, but you have nothing to counter a uh, Sivir, who just came up absolutely massive in that fight. 10 assists on Sivir, and that is what's brought her back into the game. Has Infinity Edge, has a last, or uh, a Phantom Dancer working on Last Wisp. We're almost there. Could probably have sold Doran's back. Could he have? Yeah, I could have sold Doran's to pick up the rest of Last Whisper, but. Uh, I don't know, I just wanted to hang on to that. You're selling items is never something you want to do because it represents like a drop in like uh, anywhere from 5 to 10 CS. So you really don't want to like get rid of it just for free. Now, nah, but the Bush of Death is the team fight strategy of choice here for 4 not. They're going to wait around Baron. They know that uh, Legion has to come by here. At some point, it uh, looks like Bloodwater is going to find the ward here. So he's going to kill that off. Itai does get spotted, and Kiko does get spotted as well, right before the ward dies. So Legion knows where Fornot is and where it was so one-sided early on. I mean, it's still a 10k gold disadvantage. It is much, much more even because Fornot has managed to do not the impossible, but definitely in the, the improbable in winning their two, last two team fights. So I don't know, guys. Still anybody's game. We are closing it at 33 minutes. This is solid. Uh, I say this is early late game just because of the slow way that uh, the game has progressed uh, and the comeback that Fournot is mounting. I still think that uh, as far as the damage is concerned, it's heavily in favor of uh, Team Legion. You know, Lulu's not the highest DPS, but once you hit that Lich Bane, that's a really good pickup. It makes picks just, uh, yeah. Picks his damage almost as annoying as uh, you know, certain other fairies. Lattimore has picked up a Negatron cloak and finishes up Randuin, so he's like, eh, you know, I got enough uh, 
enough armor sitting at 231 is going to build up for probably either a force of nature not sure what else he would turn uh, the negatron cloak into could go for like a spell shield from banshee's veil but uh legion not really wanting to take care of baron quite yet they're going to go in they know that kiko please is out of position will he get slowed here he could actually there's the picks to get a little bit of extra range on Glitterlands, but kiko actually is going to get out of there alive he is a little bit slowed there uh, from the phage proc on demon lol but uh actually uh cc uh, dark binding landed on freaker he's got chunked by about uh i don't know a fifth of his health so ping's going out from four knot they want to loop around through this push right here it is double warded so uh, they will be able to clear that out as i do believe yeah bloodwater does have his oracles still both teams just waiting around neither one of them can do baron what on earth is going on and what's going on is Freaker getting hit by another Dark Binding V8. Takashi X is out of position a little bit. He's going to have to retreat. Bloodwater taking a cue. Freaker getting dropped once again, taking absolutely every single one of those. There's the Elephant Cruiser on to Peril. Peril's going to get focused, but with the... Uh, oh, man. He's going to be able to micro it away. Gets out alive. No. Taken down there by Prolly. And uh, I believe he fired a Glitter Lance off of Picks. There goes Itai as well. And this is the way that Legion wanted to throw down their team fight. I don't think that Four Knots going to be able to t come back from this. They have an absolutely incredible minion wave, blue caster minions and all pushing in onto the bottom lane, but I don't think that's going to be enough to take down the turret. Bottom lane, Ace is picked up in the base. Haha, <laughs> it's the Ace in base. <laughs> okay, so while my jokes get even worse, the game gets even better as it does finish. GG's called out, and so this will be a win here for 14 Legion versus four knots uh, so for what it's worth uh you guys get to make your own opinion about the different subs that they did have on their team uh thanks for watching guys congratulations to uh, both legion and four knot mostly the legion for picking up the win if you like what you saw uh go ahead post a comment down below let me know what you thought uh, like subscribe whatever you want to do and i'll see you guys later so thanks for watching peace out